What's happening guys? In today's video, we are going to go over the doctoral degree tier list where we rank doctoral degrees from S tier, which is really good, to F tier, which is awful. Now, you might be wondering what the heck I'm wearing right now because as my subscribers love to point out, I always wear a black shirt in all of my videos. Well, joke's on you. Now I'm wearing a black-ish robe. And this happens to be the same robe that I wore when I graduated with my doctorate. Now another thing I didn't know is when you graduate you get this weird hat that kind of looks like uh, the combination of a beret and an octagon. Now I do know a lot about getting a doctorate because I've gotten one. I've gone all the way through the system from undergraduate to the highest level and so I kind of know a lot about the whole subject of getting a college degree. I also have a ton of friends who went through the same thing. We've had lots of conversations and I have a lot of insight on this. And this was another video that got requested requested over and over again by my loyal so come on, we'll cut that part i really can't talk man like holy let's shit. go it's fucking five lines man <laughs> <laughs> and this was another video that was requested over and over again by my loyal subscribers so of course i'm going to deliver now let me know that you appreciate these subscriber requested videos by automatically without even thinking about it smashing the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. So let's jump right in with number one on the list, which is going to be architects. So these are the people that design buildings and stuff, and the debt to income ratio is gonna be somewhere around 2.25 to one. Now that's actually not too bad compared to a lot of the ones on the list. And I will say that the debt to income ratio data that I collected is probably higher than the actual reality of things, just because there's not a lot of accurate data out there. However, if you compare them to each other, I would say that they're probably pretty accurate. So the debt to income ratio probably isn't going to be 2.25 to 1. It might be something like 1.5 to 1. But when you compare it to the other ones on the list, that means there's going to be either less or more debt, if that makes any sense. Now, architects are going to make around $80,000 a year. There's 133,000 jobs available, and it's growing at 8%, which is faster than average. Additionally, these are the statistics for a bachelor level degree. And so for a doctorate, you're probably going to make around 25% more than that. This would bump you up into the six figure a year level. So this one isn't too bad, but it's also not that great either. I'm going to go ahead and put this one into C tier. C for cool, but pretty tough to break into. Whew. Speaking of cool, I am going to take this robe off because I am getting extremely hot. Next one on the list is going to be acupuncturist, and this is basically the people that put needles all over different places in people's bodies. And this is a form of alternative medicine. Apparently it helps, you know, alleviate pain and heal different diseases. Pretty controversial in the medical field, of course, but we're not going to get into that in this video. Believe it or not, there are a lot of schools out there that charge over $50,000 a year for this degree. The debt to income ratio for this one is 4.6 to 1. Now, just to put that into perspective, I recommend that you pretty much never go over a debt to income ratio of 3 to 1. That's like pretty much the highest that you should ever go. Generally, you want to try to stay under 2 to 1 debt to income ratio. And if you're in a career where you're not making very much money, you probably want to go even lower than that. Now, what I mean by that is a 2 to 1 debt to income ratio means you're making $100,000 a year and you have to go $200,000 into debt. That's manageable. You can pay it off over a few years it'll probably take you like five years to pay it off but at the end of those five years you'll be good to go when you get into the 4.6 to 1 debt to income ratio it gets to the point where it's pretty much impossible for you to ever be able to pay it off because that means you'd have four hundred and sixty thousand dollars in debt if you made a hundred thousand dollars a year now this one isn't even listed on bls but the problem with this career is from what i found they don't even make a hundred thousand dollars a year they make somewhere around seventy five thousand and this is for the ones that actually are able to find a job and many of them can't. I have a cousin who actually went into this. He was, you know, a naturopath and he was not able to find a job after years and years of searching. He eventually gave up and went into a completely unrelated industry. I don't even know what to say about this one. This one goes into F tier. F for 4.6 to one debt to income ratio. That's just awful. Next one on the list is going to be an art related PhD. So this is where you would get a PhD in an art related degree like film or music. Now this is almost never going to be worth it unless you want to become a professor at a university. Becoming a professor is pretty rare though and there can only be so many people that teach people how to teach people how to teach people how to teach people. Now, additionally, getting your PhD takes on average 8.2 years, and that's on top of your bachelor's degree, which takes around four years. So that's over 12 years on average in order to get your PhD. And that's why the average person that graduates with it is going to be over 33 years old. But once you're done, that means it's game time, baby, right? 
Not really because the average PhD is going to be over $100,000 in debt. And any follower of my channel knows that the type of debt that you have to take out in order to get a graduate level degree is much worse than the type of student loan debt that you take out in undergrad. On top of this, PhDs barely earn more in the same field than master's graduates earn, even though they go to an extra like six years of school. And if that wasn't enough, when you're getting your PhD, you're probably gonna get worked like 10 to 12 hours a day, seven days a week. You have to do original research and then present it to people in front of a panel, you get grilled, and if you pass that, then you can finally get your doctorate. Everyone is going to be assigned an advisor that's gonna help you through this whole process, and that's kind of just the luck of the draw, because if you get a good advisor, that's gonna be awesome, but if you get a bad one, it can actually hurt you. Now on top of this, many people don't even end up finishing their PhDs, especially in the fields where a lot of people go for PhDs just because of the fact that they can't find a job with a bachelor's or a master's level degree. So for instance, only 29% of humanities majors end up finishing their PhD over a seven year period. This one is going to be F tier clearly. F for only worth it if you're rich or you're a trust fund baby. Next one on the list is going to be college professor. What's that I hear? Someone out there said that you can be a college professor with some of these degrees. Well, this is a comment that I get all the time. People will comment, oh, well, this degree isn't useless because you can become a college professor and teach other people how to get the same degree. And I guess you're kind of right there, but the problem is there's just not that much room for that many college professors. Now you can expect to have about a 1.8 debt to income ratio, which isn't bad. College professors make around $79,000 a year on average. There's 1.3 million jobs available and it's growing at 11%. $79,000 a year is pretty low for a doctoral level degree. And additionally, it's pretty difficult to actually get into academia. Think about it. A professor will teach hundreds of students every single year. How many of those students are going to go on to become professors themselves. Many people that go into academia and they want to become professors end up realizing that it's very similar to what's known as a pyramid scheme. And by that, I mean only the people at the very top end up making money and just about everyone else ends up either not making any money or losing money. And they do this in hopes that someday they will make it to the top, but very few of them ever do. So you've got teachers teaching teachers how to teach teachers to teach and teach and blah, 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 and so on. Now, if you don't believe me, I always say, this, check out the subreddit r slash grad school where they talk about this all the time. Still, this isn't one of the worst on the list. There's other ones that are much worse. And if you are able to make it to that professor level and get yourself tenure, that can be a pretty sweet gig. Just make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into. College professor is going to go into B tier. B for better hope that you get your tenure. Next one on the list is going to be chiropractor. And this one, <laughs> This one is awful. Chiropractors are the people that pop people's necks and their backs and they post videos about it on YouTube for us to laugh at. They also have a debt to income ratio of 4.9 to one. This is the worst on the entire list. This is awful. Now for all of that debt, you can expect to make around $70,000 a year. There's 50,000 jobs available and it's growing at 7%. These are really bad numbers for a doctoral level degree. The only reason you should become a chiropractor is maybe if you come from a family full of chiropractors and you just have to get the degree in order to work in the family business or some kind of weird situation like that. Other than that, don't do it. This one goes in F tier, F for financially f Next one on the list is going to be dentists and they're going to have a 2.5 to one debt to income ratio. So dentists are the brave souls that are okay with putting their hands into people's mouths all day, every day. So the debt to income ratio here is gonna be about 2.5 to one, which seems a little bit high, but because of the fact that dentists have a relatively high salary, it's actually not too bad. Dentists make $159,000 a year. There's 155,000 jobs available and it's growing at 7%, which is as fast as average. Still, $159,000 isn't that good, and that is why this one is going to go into B tier. B for don't bite off more than you can chew. Next one on the list is going to be lawyer, and this is another one of those classic career paths that for many decades was really good. In recent times, it's become a little bit overrated, a little bit saturated. Now, lawyers have a debt to income ratio of 2.8 to one, which is pretty high. They make around $122,000 a year. There's eight 
823,000 jobs available in the United States and it's growing at 6%. Now the thing about being a lawyer is there's a huge disparity in pay. So the lawyers at the very top are making millions and millions of dollars a year, whereas the lawyers at the bottom might be scraping by on like 40, 50,000 dollars a year if they even have a job. A lot of it has to do with what school you go to, how good of a student you are, who you know, and all sorts of other factors like that. This one is a big risk, big reward type of degree. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into B tier, B for Better Call Saul. Next one on the list is going to be Medical Doctor, and this is another one of those extremely popular degrees. Now this is another one on the list that's a bit overrated in my opinion. That doesn't mean that it's not still good, that just means that the hype is up here and the reality is like right here. Still, this is one of the best doctoral level degrees that you can get. It has a 1.64 to 1 debt to income ratio, which is really good, especially considering how much you make. Doctors can easily clear over $250,000 a year, sometimes much more than that depending on their specialty. So compared to other doctoral level degrees, this one is going to go into S tier, S for sleep deprivation during residency. Next one on the list is going to be optometrist, and they're gonna be experts in all things that have to do with your eyes. Now optometrists have a 3.4 to 1 debt to income ratio which is not very good. However they do have decent numbers which kind of make up for that. They make around $115,000 a year. There's 42,000 jobs available and it's growing at 10% which is faster than average. Still that 3.4 to 1 debt to income ratio really scares me and for that reason I'm going to go ahead and put this one into D tier. D for dope glasses. Next one on the list is going to be a dental specialist like an orthodontist and endodontist or periodontist. Now they have a two to one debt to income ratio, which is really good considering how much money they make. They make about as much money as traditional doctors, so you're probably not gonna have that much trouble paying off your loans. This one is going to go into A tier, A for smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Next one on the list, we're gonna talk about pharmacists, and pharmacists are legal drug dealers and experts on pharmacology. They have a 2.2 to one debt to income ratio on this list, which isn't too bad compared to a lot of the others. And on top of that, pharmacists make around $128,000 a year. There's 314,000 jobs available and it's growing at 0%. Now the job outlook is pretty scary here. Definitely don't join pharmacy if your plan is to become a retail pharmacist because retail pharmacy is completely saturated. I'll probably make a whole video about that in the future, so stay tuned. Still, the debt to income ratio isn't that bad here and you do make a pretty good amount of money. This one is going to go into A tier. A for all right as long as you don't go into retail. Next one on the list is going to be a physical therapist and they help ill or injured people improve their movement or pain. They have a 2.5 to 1 debt to income ratio which is on the higher side especially considering the fact that they don't make all that much money. They make around $89,000 a year, there's 247,000 jobs available and it's growing at 22% which is much faster than average. Now one thing that I will say about this one is it has an extremely high job satisfaction score. So no matter what metric you look at, for instance let's look at pay scale, it has an 80 89% meaning score, which means 89% of the people find that their job is extremely meaningful. That's the highest on the list by far. One of the highest meaning scores out of any job out there. So even if the salary is a little bit low, this one still has a good meaning score. And so I'm gonna bump it up just a tiny bit. I'm gonna put this one into C tier. C for constantly gets confused with occupational therapy. Next one on the list is going to be psychologist at a doctoral level. So this is going to include both doctoral PhDs as well as PsyDs. Now psychology is one of the most popular majors that you can go for, and in my opinion, it's pretty overrated. They have a 3.2 to 1 debt to income ratio, which is really bad, especially considering how much you make. They only make around $80,000 a year, there's 181,000 jobs available, and it's growing at 14%, which is pretty good. That is a scary amount of debt to have while you're only making about $80,000 a year. Psychology is going to go into D tier. D for damn, I can already tell I'm gonna get a lot of hate comments for this one. Next one on the list is going to be a science-related PhD. So this would be something like biology or chemistry that you get a PhD in. So all the same things apply to this one that apply to the art PhD that I mentioned before, where it takes a long time in order to get your degree. It costs a lot, there's a lot of 
downsides to it. The only difference with this one is there actually is a lot of opportunities outside of academia, whereas the art related PhD, academia is pretty much the only way that you can go. However, this one isn't as good as the other STEM degrees and the you know STEM acronym, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So I'm gonna put this one into B tier, B for better than average, but still not as good as the other STEM degrees. Next one on the list is going to be a liberal arts, social science, humanities type degree at the PhD level. So this would be a PhD level degree like sociology or maybe history. Now all of the same issues apply to this one that applied to the art degree. However, it's a little bit better than art in my opinion. And so for that reason, I'm gonna put it slightly higher on the list. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into D tier. D for debt because it's probably not worth it. Next one on the list is going to be the rest of the STEM degrees, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Now, honestly, these ones are usually pretty solid even at the doctoral level. In fact, there's a lot of positions out there that prefer people in mathematics or technology and engineering that have a doctoral level degree. This one is actually pretty decent. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into A tier. A for actually might be worth it for some people. Next one on the list is going to be teachers that have doctorates. So I've actually seen this several times where high school teachers or even in very rare cases, middle school teachers will have doctorates. They do end up making more than their bachelor level or master's level counterparts, even though it's not that much more. Now they have a 2.5 to one debt to income ratio, which isn't very good considering that they don't make very much money. They make around $61,000 a year. There's 1 million jobs and it's growing at around 4%. This is for all high school teachers though. So you can probably add about 25% on top of that for doctoral level degrees. Still not that great overall. I wish this one was a little bit better, but unfortunately I have to be fair here. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into C tier. C for 12 years of college in order to work as a high school teacher. Next one on the list is going to be veterinarian. Now everybody loves animals and wouldn't you just love to be able to work with animals all day long. Unfortunately, veterinarians have a 3.1 to one debt to income ratio. And unfortunately, they only make around $95,000 a year. There's 84,000 jobs available, but it is growing at 18%, which is much faster than average. The statistics aren't horrible, but that debt to income ratio is high enough that this one is pretty scary. Still, if you're able to find a cheaper school, which I pretty much universally recommend for any graduate level degree, just go with the cheapest possible school that you can possibly go to. If you're able to find a really cheap school, this one will probably be worth it because it does have a pretty good meaning score and job satisfaction score because you get to work with animals all day long. So this one is gonna go into D tier. D for dogs are better than cats, and that's just a fact. Thanks for watching my video, guys. It was super fun to make this one. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. I will catch you later.